Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a very special episode of the round tables. So special that we had to bring out the silver swords, which Jimmy found somewhere. At a Dollar General. <laughs> Three at dollar piece. store. Because Jimmy was ambushed by two elders. What well, how long ago was that? It was June 27th. June 27th. And so we're finally able to sit down and talk about it. But the reason why it's so special is he recorded the conversation that he had. So, Jimmy, tell us what happened that day. Well, I was uh, sitting outside having my morning coffee and smoking a couple of cigarettes and checking my phone. And then I noticed uh, a car was pulling in my driveway. And I have a really long driveway, so and I can see far downs and um, see who's coming in. It wasn't a car that I recognized. And I was like, huh, you know, I've been waiting for somebody to show up in my house for about five months now, and they haven't gotten here yet. Um, so I started hiding my cigarettes and uh, kept an eye on the car. And when I noticed that there was four heads in there, I was like, yep, that is the Jehovah's Witnesses coming to see me. And so the two older elders got out of the car and i met them at the top of my driveway and they just said that they were in the area working they wanted to come by and see how i was doing and they had missed me hadn't seen me for like six months so they just wanted to see me and i was like well guys i'm, I'm glad you're here um why don't you come on down here and let's have a little chat <laughs> uh i said hang on let me get you two chairs so i got the two chairs and had them sit down and we started talking. Okay, so what we're gonna do, since Jimmy was good enough and quick thinking enough to record all this, is we're gonna listen to each segment because he talked about a number of things. We're gonna listen to each segment of what they talked about and you're gonna listen to it too and then we're gonna discuss it and see what we think about it. So let's listen to the first segment now. Now before we go to that clip, let me set it up. We had actually started talking um, about the Australian Royal Commission right away. And that's the first thing I brought up. And so when I remembered to go ahead and record this, we're already about eight minutes into the conversation. So what was their response about the ARC? They didn't know what I was talking about. Yeah, so I've, I've run into that before. Yeah. And you've run into that before with who was one of the elders that used to be in your hall uh, that you had a conversation with. Yes. He claimed he didn't yes, know about it. Yes, it was another either. elder that didn't How? know about it either. <laughs> yeah. How? That's a very good question. You know, it, I think that just goes to show how much the people who are true believers, they listen when Watchtower tells them, don't go looking for us on the Internet. It's all apostate lies yeah. or whatever. So all they they didn't even know. Even the elders often don't know. OK, well, let's go ahead and listen to the first clip that followed that. And we'll talk about it. My problem is, is I don't understand how Watchtower can say they get involved with the UN when they shouldn't be. And going back to the Australian Royal Commission, Jeffrey Jackson was actually on the stand in those court hearings. And he was asked the question, do you guys feel like you're the only organization providing God's truth? Jeffrey Jackson literally said on the stand, it would be presumptuous of us to think that we are the only ones. He said that I can pull that up right now. He actually we'll said, pull it up and see it. you want to see it? I'll pull it up. Now, does the governing body or do the members of the governing body, um, do you see yourselves as modern day disciples, the modern day equivalent of, Jesus' disciples? Uh, we certainly hope to follow Jesus and be his disciples. And do you see yourselves as Jehovah God's spokespeople on earth? Uh, that, I think, would seem to be quite presumptuous to, to say that uh, we are the only spokesperson that God is using. Uh, the, clear, the scriptures clearly show uh, that uh, someone can act in harmony with God's spirit in uh, giving comfort and help in the congregations. But uh, if I could just clarify a little, going back to Matthew 24, uh, 
clearly Jesus said that in the last days, and Jehovah's Witnesses believe these are the last days, there would be a slave, a group of persons who would have responsibility to care for the spiritual food. So in that respect, uh, we view ourselves as trying to fulfill that role. I'm telling you guys, this has been hard for me, finding out all this information. But, but see, Jimmy, the more you get involved in this... I'm not going to keep a blind eye, though. I'm not yeah, going to just it. walk around with my head in the sand. But, let me ask you something. Do you think Jehovah is the supreme God? I believe that... There, I believe he is okay. God, yes. Do you believe that Jehovah's Witnesses is the one that is doing the work that the Bible that Jehovah tells us to do to the Bible. Well, according to Jeffrey Jackson, it would be presumptuous to think that we're the only ones. That, he, somewhere is there, that he, that is the No, 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 it's not. Something. It's not. So, Jimmy discusses the Ark with them. They ask to see the footage of Jeffrey Jackson denying basically that they were the true religion. And then they watch it. And what was the elder's response? Well, his reaction was that he couldn't believe that I just showed that to him because he made the comment that, well, Jimmy, how often do you know that we go to door to go to the door and tell people that unless you're a Jehovah's witness, you're going to die. <laughs> That's what he said. Right. Yeah. That we don't go to the door and tell people we're the true religion. Yeah. But So what do you think about that, D.A.? Does that sound honest to you? No. And the thing that bothers me the most every time I watch that video or think about it is the cowardice behind it. You know, you would think that if the governing body truly believes that Jehovah is backing them up, that they would be very proud and very bold to say, yes, we know we're Jehovah's only channel. But he doesn't do that at all. He sidesteps it completely and says it would be presumptuous, you know, to think that. And um, then tells us or tells active witnesses to go and be bold and courageous. And you see, they completely, you know, they were completely unprepared for the response. <laughs> yeah. They didn't even know about it. They didn't even know how to handle it. Or react. I was just surprised that he actually said, the one elder said, show it to me. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I was going to say that. I was, <laughs> really? He's like, show it to me? Like, show it to me. Because they're not... That's new. I was yeah. Like, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's do this. Yeah, that, that was very surprising. So, okay. So, you, you show them the video, and it's like they just deny what they just heard. Yeah. Which that's, I mean, that's indoctrination. The only way to deny the facts of your own leader saying what he just said is to just be so full of double think in your brain to be able to believe two opposing things at the same time. It's, just, it's a mess. Yeah. All right. So that happens. And let's listen to the next clip to see what comes after. But for Jeffrey Jackson to go up there and say it's presumptuous, don't y'all have a problem with that? No, because how many times do we go to the knock on doors of people out here, Jimmy, and say, well, where's your Holy Spirit? So we've got the true religion. You do, you do what we say. But, we, but we, get them, we get them in for a Bible study, and we pull them in, and then eventually we tell them, oh, yeah, unless you're not a Jehovah's Witness, you're going to get destroyed in Armageddon. Yeah, but, but Jimmy, where, where, does the, where, does, where does Jehovah look at in a person? It looks at their hearts. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so if we can get to a person's mind... That person makes his mind up if he's going to serve Jehovah or not. See, it goes to his heart. We can't, we can't read hearts. We can't read minds, but we can put something in the mind for people to think about. So did you catch that, folks? We need to put a thought in their mind. We can't control their hearts. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if we can get it into their mind. Into their minds. What do you think about that, Deasis? I think it's very dishonest and manipulative. If you have the truth... And if God's really with you and you're confident of that, you don't need to go around the back door. Yeah. 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 And you know what really bugs me about that particular response the elder gave is he admits, he asks you, what does it matter? What matters most? And you say, well, the heart. Mm -hmm. And he agrees with that and says, yes, it's about the heart, but we have to take over their mind. In effect, is what he's saying. If it's about the heart, 
Why do you have to put anything in their mind at all? Why isn't it just enough for them to have a good heart? Yeah. But he's effectively, <laughs> he's saying two opposite things. He's saying it's enough to have a good heart, but it's not enough to have a good heart. We have to put something in their mind so they'll worship Jehovah properly. But if they have a good heart, aren't they, aren't they already worshiping God in an acceptable way if it's all exactly. about the heart? So he's saying two completely opposite things and passing it off as if that's somehow true. Yeah. That, that's what really bothers me about that. All right. You guys got anything else before we go to the next part? Because there's a lot more. Let's roll the next clip. All right. Roll the next clip. Here it comes. <laughs> yeah, but then I understand that. But then that's just two things. This child sex abuse I have a problem with yeah, okay. because it's a crime. Well, it, 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 we, we, we realize that. That's, that that's a huge thing. That's Jeffrey Jackson lying on the stand because he literally lied. He said it's presumptuous for us to think about, think that we are that person or to think that we are. He should have stood up and said, yes, we do think that. Well, because eventually, if someone's studying, they're going to find out that that's what Watchtower believes. Okay, so the ARC comes back up a little bit. A little bit. Child sex abuse comes back up. Yes. You say it's a, a crime, crime, and the elder admits... We realize that. ...that it's a crime. Now, we just had, and I did the rebuttal yesterday, to what I call the cop-out article for Watchtower, mm -hmm. trying to explain away their terrible policies for child sex abuse, which uh, mentions, it calls it a sin or some variation of a sin 20 times, and only once refers to it as violating a law. It doesn't directly say child sex abuse is a crime. It says when you violate a law, it, it's a strangely worded, way of putting it and then it says like child sex abuse but the elder can had believe, no problem just saying yes it's a we, crime we realize it is yeah can you, can you believe he said that yeah well if it's a crime why don't you report it every time you know about it to hell with obeying the authorities yeah exactly i, I was shocked that's, that he said that <laughs> that's what bothers me the most about it i mean if if the religion taught we do not obey the authorities okay well fine i mean it's still terrible but at least you're not being a flaming hypocrite but exactly. when you teach in Romans 13, that the superior authorities is the government's, and you have to obey the superior authorities that they're put there for a reason to bring justice. I forget how Paul words it, you know, basically to punish wrongdoers. If you believe that they're there for that reason and you believe that you should obey them, not reporting a serious crime is not respecting the authority of the superior right. authorities. And right. he admits that it's a serious crime. Mm -hmm. But they don't report unless required Leave it by in Jehovah's law. hands. Yeah, yeah, it's don't terrible. Don't on that phrase. All right, so <sighs> <laughs> that's another doozy. But there's plenty more. So let's roll the next clip and see what he had to say after this. Another problem I have, I've got like several, um, and and this is not something that's been easy for me. In December, I bawled my head off. Because all this stuff that I'm finding out right now about the organization, I feel like I've been lied to. And to talk about love never fails, shunning is not loving. When you, when you cut someone off from the organization, either by disfellowshipping or disassociating, that's not a loving provision. If you look in 1 Corinthians when Paul was saying, do not even greet a brother, yeah. did you look at the context? And, and what was happening. And then in 2 Corinthians, he comes back and says, hey, maybe I was a little too harsh. That is what he said. So to be able for Watchtower to be able to use that as an uh, argument mm -hmm. that we can't talk to people or people can't talk to us, that's hogwash. I mean, it's not fair. Do you, know, do you guys literally have any clue how many people out there are hurt by Watchtower policies? There's grandmothers that can't talk to their grandkids. There's kids that can't speak to their parents. 
there's kids when they get 18 years old and they decide that they want to leave, that their parents kick them out. My story, I was 20 years old and had to leave Virginia because I got disfellowshipped. Because my whole family and all my friends were witnesses. And I knew they couldn't talk to me because of Watchtower's policy, which didn't start until 1952. And there was an Awake article in 1947 that railed against the Catholics again, saying that excommunication was wrong and it had its roots in paganism. I can pull that up too, where the Watchtower literally said that about the Catholic Church. And then five years later, they put it in place to start shunning people. How loving is that? How loving is it when you go and you look on the, when you go to the regional convention three years ago, and there was that drama where the little girl, the girl was calling her mom. Y'all remember that? And the mom just shut it off. What if that girl had been in a car accident? What if she had been raped and her mother wouldn't take the phone call? How loving is that? Well, Jimmy, do you believe what the Bible says? I'm questioning some things. Yeah, I know. Okay. Well, because then if you're questioning the Bible, you know. Now, you, this, you, I'm, you, this you, isn't, I'm not talking about the Bible right now. Yeah, I'm talking about. The Bible says if, uh, uh, we shouldn't even associate with, with person the person. That's right. So wow. that, that part really disturbs me. I find it very disturbing. Yeah, when I was. I, 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 I don't know what happened, but I just got real passionate about the shunning issue. And I just started naming things off one after other. And they then they just sat there and they they had no response. What That's, were their faces like? Do you remember at that time? Just like <sighs> like they were listening, but kind of like a condescending listening right. kind of face thing, you know. But um, yeah, I just. I, I don't know. I just didn't stop. I just kept going on this one. Impressive recall of all those references, oh, by the way. <laughs> Lots of study in the last yeah. six months. <laughs> and we had just done the round table. Yes. Where we went through the 10 things yeah. and these came up. So yes. you were well prepared. Well prepared. Hmm. Divine intervention, maybe. <laughs> so, Deasis, what was your reaction to what just happened? Well, one thing that I took particular note of um, during that segment is the lack of empathy, the robotic responses and lack of empathy. These are people that are not trained to really just kind of stop and say, wow, I'm really sorry that you went through that. They are trained to be apologists who act as if they are representatives of a company in a press conference. And they are just trained to respond, trained to respond, trained to respond. There isn't any thought process going on there. So take note of that anytime you're debating or talking with Jehovah's Witnesses. He didn't care about anything no. that I said. No. It's like it went right over his head yeah. because he goes, well, Jimmy, what does the Bible say about that? Yeah. So that, 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 you tell him. that was mm. it. That's the part that bothers me. Yeah. You, this affects you so much that you start getting emotional mm -hmm. and you bring up the video from the convention where the mother will not answer the phone. And you say, well, what if she had been raped? What if she had been in a car accident? Yeah. What if these terrible things Nothing. had happened? She's not going to answer the phone. You know, how is that love? His response to that is, well, Jimmy, you believe what the Bible says? Yeah. Like he <laughs> ignores, Every, he ignores everything. everything you said. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the Bible says. What you are asking is, is that love? And the obvious answer, well, no, of course that's not love. So how... How do you justify that? But he wants to just read what he wants to read the prescribed Watchtower verse to just wash away and excuse all the pain that they're causing through the shunning policy. Yep. You know? He wasn't trying to listen and understand. He was waiting to respond. It was obvious. Yes. There wasn't thought oh, that, process yeah. that is going well on said. there at all. I could yes. have talked for another five minutes. Yeah. And he, and he would have said, said the same, same thing. thing. Same, same exact thing. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. That's a very good point. He wasn't listening. He was waiting to respond. Yes. With the prescribed watchtower, shepherd the flock of God, secret elders handbook, scripture that he's supposed to read or the thing he's supposed to say. 
anytime that comes up. Well, Jimmy, you believe what Bob says? You're like, that's it. That's it's it. like you hit the play button on him. Yeah, really? Yeah, he's like a string doll. You pull the string doll. Jimmy, you believe what the Bible says? Well, Jimmy, you believe what the Bible says? You got to make that your well, ringtone. Jimmy, you know, oh, that, that would be great. That would be it. awesome. We should get a doll it. made. Yes. <laughs> Where you pull the string and it says that. A little thing that spins around. <laughs> but and, and as funny as that is, it really shows what the mentality is like. It's yeah. not about reason. It's not we about love. We have to love. laugh. It's not to about keep from yeah. yeah, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> what is the prescribed response? Yeah. If yeah. you were a witness, what is the prescribed response? And that's it. That's the response. All right, well then, Jimmy, <laughs> I love this next part. Let's listen to the next clip when Jimmy decides, well, if you're going to use the Bible, let's use the Bible. Okay. Don't so, even have you got your Bible? Yeah, I have my Bible. Let me have your Bible for a second. Here you go. All right, so if you want to do that, mm-hmm. I'm telling you guys, I've done so much. Well, you've done a lot, Jimmy, but evidently... You know, there is so much that the evil slave class can bring into your out. mind. Into your and, mind. But how am I wrong with this? How am I wrong about the UN? Why would an evil the evil slave class didn't put that in my mind? What's gonna happen to the UN at Armageddon? It's gonna still function. But then why did Watchtower get involved it, with them? It's still gonna function because Watchtower is a big organization and they're involved with everybody. But. They tell us not to get involved in the worldly That's affairs, right. but they, it's okay even, for them. We don't even, we're not even encouraged to get in, into court actions in a courtroom. I know, but then why did Watchtower get involved with the UN? Because they have to know what's going on. And also, that's one way of witnessing. No, no. Their, their explanation was they needed a library card. They didn't say that. Okay. So before we get into the scripture that Jimmy's about to read them, because he does use the Bible, at the very beginning, uh, it seems like in this particular segment, the UN just kind of pops out of nowhere. So I'm assuming you guys talked about that in yeah, the first couple of we minutes. talked about it a little bit. Okay, so yeah. the UN and ARC came up, yes. which I know those are two of the big things that yes. woke you up, so I can see why that would happen. And tell us, can you summarize like what, what just happened here? So I asked them why did the why did Watchtower get involved with the UN, and his, his response was he says that because the Watchtower is a big organization. Yeah, well, and so they're involved with everybody. With everybody, yeah, right. Or the UN is a big organization, yeah. and we're involved with everybody. It's a great reason. And and great. you but you bring that right back. You you tell them, but we weren't we weren't supposed to be involved with the United Nations, right? As individual Jehovah's Witnesses, it wasn't okay. So why is it okay for Watchtower? And then the other guy, his his cop out is well, it's it's like a, we're giving him a witness. <laughs> no, you're not. And plus, <laughs> then your response to that is no, it was for a library card, <laughs> and that's the truth. That's, yeah, that's that's, that's, that's the... what they claim anyway. That's what Watchtower claims, so they could get the library card, yeah. which that's doubtful, but because that's what they actually stated in their response. You know, so what do you think about that, Deasis? Well, there's a lot of things wrong with that. Um, one thing is, as an NGO, you have to kind of be in line with their thinking and, and their methods and even be in agreement and in support of that. So, you know, either way, that's not neutrality. And if we're going to talk about right. the bottom line here, the bottom line is that Watchtower, Jehovah's Witnesses, are a member of Babylon the Great. And the Bible says, or according to their interpretation of it, Jehovah's Witnesses are not supposed to be part of Babylon the Great. But the bottom line is they are a member of Babylon the Great. It's hypocrisy. Because we're it's a big organization. Hypocrisy. We're a big organization. Right. We're involved so that makes everybody. it okay. Yeah, that right. makes it all right. right. Let's well, go to war too. <laughs> and we talked about this in the first round table over the 10 things. The United Nations was called, in the Revelation book, which is now defunct, uh, the image of the wild beast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm. Um, it's hypocrisy at its best. If Satan <laughs> owns a library, 
Would you get a card? <laughs> I love you it. You know what? I, I don't care what I book. About the app. That's good. <laughs> what book is in that library that you need so badly? That's a good way to point it. That's a good way to point it. Why does go Jehovah to need <laughs> Satan's help? I mean, seriously. Yeah, we're going to get into that later on another video. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's good. the UN yeah. part. And the next segment. Well, I'm not even going to give it away. Let's just listen to it because it's great. Hold on. Let me find this one scripture. Okay, here it is. All right. So another issue I have is the failed dates. Um, Russell started out. And when Russell started out with the whole 1914 thing, he said that the world was going to end in 1914 it was actually written in his material that, that, that was a, okay a, a, that was right then 1925 rutherford said that the holy ones would come back isaac abraham jacob that they would be resurrected in 1925 he actually had a house built in san diego and they named it beth serene which is called the house of princes because he said that when 1925 happens, that they're going to need a place to stay. However, Rutherford ended up using that place for the rest of his life. Yeah. He went there in the winter and he went to Europe in the spring. During the 30s, while we're go the United States was going through the Great Depression, he's riding around in two big Cadillacs and living in this nice ha in this house. But in the material, in the, in the book, Millions Now Living Will Never Die, he literally says that in 1925, this is what's going to happen. Well, we know it didn't. Then in 1975, y'all were around in 1975. And they highly suggested or implied that in 1975, the world was going to end. They started putting information in the watchtower going back to 67, 68, 69 they were telling young ones don't get a career because the world's going to end don't get involved with this because the world's going to end do you know how many people didn't go to college or didn't get a career and now they're older and they hardly have any money because they didn't set themselves up when they had a chance to so the 1975 there was actually a district overseer at one of the district conventions and y'all know it he said, stay alive till 75. I can pull that talk up. So that's a fail. So, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here's my point. That's a failed prophecy. They were saying that. They said it in, like, Russell said it in 14. Then it was actually, 1918 was one of the years too. 1925, 1951 was one as well. It's not really well known, but that, that was one. And then 1975. And then in the Watchtower, that had the um, picture of all, it was like in the 80s, 1983 or 84. Um, there, was a, there was a picture that said, uh, by no, this generation will by no means pass away. And it said, we can see this fulfillment in our century. So they were saying before the year 2000, before the turn of the century, before the year 2000, that we would see the end of the world. Now they've changed it. When they just say now, it's just, Soon. But don't you think it's Jehovah's time period to end situations, not man? I I don't agree. You, I agree don't that. Don't you agree for Jehovah God to end this system? He's gonna do it in his own time. But here's 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 the problem. You have so many people going back to 1975. So many people felt that way. So many people believed that Jehovah was going to destroy the world. But in the scripture, you talked about. You know, you asked me a second on scripture. Deuteronomy 18, verses 20 through 22. If any prophet presumptuously, presumptuously speaks a word in my name that I did not command him to speak or speaks in the name of other gods, the prophet must die. However, you may say in your heart, how will we know that Jehovah has not spoken the word? When the prophet speaks in the name of Jehovah and the word is not fulfilled or does not come true, then Jehovah did not speak that word. The prophet spoke it presumptuously. You should not fear him. So in 1975, Jehovah spoke. 
the prophet. And here's the reason. Presumptuously, it's just like a brother in that, in that video. But Holy, the Holy Spirit is supposed to run the organization. Jehovah is supposed to give light to the elders, COs, governing body. The Holy Spirit is supposed to do that. So if, if by Holy Spirit, they were telling everybody, oh, 1975 is probably going to be the end of the world. Um, that's not right. Well, Jimmy, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's safe to say that those, two elders, that. <laughs> those two elders got schooled in their own history. That was fun. Uh, I believe it. I could tell that you, you had been preparing for yes. this. Yes, I was this not. This moment. I, was, really I, I got it. excited and did not let up. They came to ambush you, but the trick was on them. Yeah, they walked right, right into it. There's yes. no question. But what you're saying is true. They've got all these dates, mm -hmm. all these dates that were predicted. They all failed. And then you read in Deuteronomy 18 where the prophet who speaks falsely should die. He must die. That's what it says, right? Yep. And what was that the other brothers uh how did he word it he said oh it's it's, it's it, he's gonna do it in his own time yeah, he's gonna do it in his own time well then why do you keep predicting dates yeah let him do it in his own time yeah. it's the the double thing going on here it's just ridiculous it, and then he tried to say well don't you think we live in the last days well that's not the point even if that was true Stop. You shouldn't be predicting dates. You, as a prophet, you should die. <laughs> if you're going to go off the Old Testament, which they do yeah. for a lot of things, yeah. the Old Testament said that a false prophet should die. And yet you're proving yourself a false prophet over and over and over again. <laughs> now, we're not advocating anybody dying. But the point is they're violating the scriptures and, and, that they're holding. And see, what was so cool is these two brothers, I think between the two of them, they probably have... 90 years yeah. of Watchtower experience. Yeah. I know one's been plus, yeah, yeah. Well, just these Which two. did them no good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I noticed just like when you brought up all the points <laughs> about shunning, not being loving, they did not respond oh, yeah, with yeah. any evidence to any fact you laid out. No. They ignored that and went to the standard prescribed line. Don't well, you don't think you think we live in the last days? Don't you think Jehovah's going to do it in his own time? Mm -hmm. Well, that's not the, I swear these guys make great politicians because they do not answer <laughs> the question. You know, they're not answering the question. <laughs> they're, they're ignoring the facts and saying something that's only marginally related to the fact, yeah. if it's related at all. And we got that a lot, but that's how we were taught. Deasis, what do you think? There were actually two things that I noticed here. Um, first off, we can invalidate almost all of Jehovah's Witness doctrine with just using 1914 alone, mm -hmm. because Jesus said this generation will not pass away until all these things have occurred. Well, that generation has passed away. And then um, another thing that I think of is the very obvious black and white scripture also, you know, allegedly a quote from Jesus is only the father knows. <laughs> so why are we guessing at it? <laughs> right. Why if, are we you're, if you're basing everything on the Bible yeah. and it says only the father knows, then why in the world yeah. are we yeah. even talking about these dates? Exactly. Jesus exactly. Christ does not know <laughs> according to that scripture. Literally. So you're saying when that you know coming. Jesus Christ. And you're exactly. going to, you know more than oh. Jesus. And that's arrogance right, right there. Boy, the, but that's, that's Watchtower. The hubris yeah. that they've had in its entire existence. Well, know? I'll tell you what, if you like where we're going with this, let's go into the next clip because we start talking about inspiration oh that's right yeah well let's let's roll the next clip if if god has given them holy spirit don't you think now y'all know y'all do know how new light is comes about right y'all do know how that comes about right y'all are not yeah, sitting you you're not sitting in a room and holy spirit comes down on you guys yeah. Yeah. okay it doesn't happen that way because as we found out the governing bodies nor inspired nor infallible they vote, they vote on organizational changes. And I know this to be a fact. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just like the elders in the congregation. See, sometimes we meet and we have a problem and we may see it one way, but then we have a prior or two and then we see it another way. 
that's Holy Spirit directing us. But uh, how how can you say that when it just didn't said in the watchtower that they're not inspired? I can't answer that because they are inspired. They're inspired. But they just in the watchtower. Yeah, most of them have the heavenly hope, not the earthly hope. But my problem is, is they admitted to not being inspired. Well, Jimmy, we hate you feel like that. I mean, oh, believe me. I know you do. Believe me. I do, too. But see, and, and, and here's, the, here, here's the thing. Not just child abuse. Not just the U.N. Not the fact that the governing body lied on the stand. He lied when he said this. Presumptuous for us to think that. When we go around and you ask any Jehovah's Witness, anyone, do you think you're God's, God's only organization? They are going to say yes. I would have said yes. Every. Who, who, who do you think of? Who do you think? At this point right think? now. Well, who do you think? I mean, at you this point, you're arguing a point about the society, but who do you think? At this point, I don't know. I don't know. I am so heartbroken. I am so depressed because everything that I have been taught right now, I'm finding holes in it. And it's not coming from apostates. It's coming from our watchtower. I mean, think about it, this too. Are the governing body inspired? That's the question. According to the watchtower, no, they're not. But according to this elder... He said, yes, they yes, are. After you read and, from the watchtower but, <laughs> where they said they're not. He goes, well, I can't answer that. But they are. But they are. <laughs> but your own literature written by the governing body says they're not the their brains must have been exploding at this point because like you said <laughs> and you made you made that point and i i'm in total agreement with what you said we all thought they were yeah yeah we were always we taught did. even if it was never explicitly said that they were inspired the way they wrote and the way they made the claims about i mean how do you get new light from god if you're not inspired by Holy Spirit, yeah, where else would it be they didn't coming like from? The fact that I brought that out about the whole voting thing. Yeah, they yeah, were, and, you know, and that's from uh, Fran's book. Yeah, Crisis of Conscience. Crisis of Conscience. Well, one thing I'm thinking of too. I mean, if you, you know, if you actually look up definitions, I'm going to look up words all the time. If you look up inspired, spirit directed, means almost the same exact thing. So they're really kind of sidestepping it and going around. Um, not saying inspired, but still trying to give you the impression that they are inspired because they say, well, we're spirit directed. Well, that's pretty much the same thing as inspiration. So mm -hmm. again, they're not inspired. And so they can't be not, spirit directed either. If you're not inspired, why are we listening to you? Yeah, exactly. Well, well then you're opinion? just a bunch of old dudes yeah. sitting around a table voting on stuff. <laughs> exactly. I got my own opinions. I'll just take my own opinion if you're not talking to God. I don't need you. If you're not inspired, your opinions or interpretations have no more merit than anyone else exactly. who studies the Bible. I exactly. Could, yeah, and I could tell I was getting to them because they started becoming a little more combative. And yeah, I saw it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they did. I had so much fun doing this. <laughs> <laughs> they really and did. Speaking, they got on the defense. Speaking of things that the elders think they're supposed to believe, but they're not. Let's roll the next clip where Jimmy gives them another sucker punch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think about it. This too. Um, do you believe that Jesus is your mediator? Of course, yeah. you. Hang on a second. Hey, I see that too. I see that too. I see that too. He's positive. Yep. Yep. That's a shame. It is. Just like Adam and Eve. Is it really so? Is it really so that you can't do this? That's, that's because of education. Yeah. We're going to have to coach you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Precious. Yes, sir. Uh, it's almost 7 o'clock.
Okay. So y'all believe that Jesus is your mediator, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Worldwide Security, Prince of Peace, 1986. Paragraph 16. Was Moses the mediator between Jehovah God and mankind in general? No. He was the mediator between the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the nation of their fleshly descendants. Likewise, the greater Moses, Jesus Christ, is not the mediator between Jehovah God and all mankind. He is the mediator between his heavenly father, Jehovah God, and the nation of spiritual Israel, which is limited to 144,000 members. So right there in Watchtower material, it is saying that Jesus is the mediator only and for the 144,000. And what publication was that year? 1986. Okay. And I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. It's new it's light now. Updated. But they still believe that. But the Bible says that he's the mediator between Jehovah and... Oh, yo, oh, yeah. The Bible clearly says. That's right. The Bible clearly says he's the mediator between mankind and God. But the material here says he is the mediator between his heavenly father, Jehovah God, and the nation of spiritual Israel. Likewise, the greater Moses, Jesus Christ, is not the mediator between Jehovah God and all mankind. All right, Jimmy, are you going to believe what the Bible says? Are you going to believe what that book says? Well, don't we take these books and study with people? Yes, but it says her. And don't we, that's obsolete. They put a lot of value into the material. That's a lot of information has up, been upgraded since that book. Was so written. here's the thing. If Holy Spirit is running the organization, why is Holy Spirit giving the writers bad information and then changing it later? Well, let me ask you this. You got no, 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 no. I want to. I want to. I'd like to have an answer for that. Why do? Why does it say? And I'm sorry, guy. I'm just really passionate about this. I haven't had a chance to talk. But when it says, "Likewise, the greater Moses, Jesus Christ, is not the mediator between Jehovah God and all mankind," why did they say that? If that's written by Holy Spirit. But it's not what, what the Bible says. It's not what the Bible says. I agree with that. That's right. But they're putting information in here that other people are seeing, and it's not correct. How do you know that other people are seeing that? Believe me, I know. Okay. There's tons. Tons. Well, we have a lot of people, that's, that's, that's yeah. scholars, that they can understand this stuff. Jimmy... <laughs> I think this is my favorite <laughs> part of. Uh, Can you believe what y'all just heard? It's. I had to write it all down because a lot happened. <laughs> so I got on some post-its here. So let's go through it. First of all, you come inside to get the book well, after bringing up. It, well, Jesus, do you believe Jesus is your mediator? Yeah, I asked him. I asked him. Do you believe Jesus is your mediator? To which they said, of yes, course. of course. Of course. Because that's what we all believe. Yeah. We all believe Jesus was our mediator. Yeah. And so you come in to get the book and they start whispering yes. about how you're an apostate. And I caught the one guy saying, he's quoting Genesis. Is it really so? He's effectively calling you Satan. You know, I didn't think about that until you just mentioned yeah. that. Is it really so? Because that's what the snake asks Eve in Genesis, right? I'm a so bad influence. Critical thinking, no. <laughs> yeah. And then, Stop. and then, while Jimmy's still inside, he says, that's what education will do. So they're calling mm -hmm. Jimmy an apostate. They're basically labeling him as Satan, or at least from Satan. And they're saying it's because he's educated. You better not go up there I and learn so, nothing, But Jimmy. they're painting this like it's a bad thing. I so can't believe that I come in and they start talking about me. I am so glad I had my phone out there still recording. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. And they did all this without what? They judged oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was no prayer. No prayer. There was no Holy Spirit. They didn't ask for Holy Spirit to make a judgment on me mm -hmm. just because I'm bringing up information. Yep. Sit. You didn't hear he's right one time. No. Nope. Wow. Good nope. facts. Huh. 
Nothing. And answering questions with questions is what they were doing. I kept yeah. bringing them back. In. Anyway, okay. So let's and go. so you you get the book. Yeah, get the book. Watchtower Bible Tract Society publication from 1986, right? Yes, Worldwide Security under the Prince of Peace. Which says quite directly that Jesus is not the mediator for any but the 144,000. And then the elder's response is, but the Bible says he is the mediator. And yeah, Dude. that's yeah. the point. Dude. That's the whole point. Yes, the Bible says he's the mediator. So it doesn't matter what the book says. <laughs> and then he asks you, I love this part. He says, uh, Jimmy, you can believe it. He says it again. You can believe what the Bible says or you can believe what that book says. Yeah. But, but then you respond. We study. Yeah, we don't with need people. Watchtower anymore. We study with people <laughs> out of these books. They, I remember there the you old go. illustration that the the Bible is God's word, but the publications are like our glasses that make yeah. it clear to oh, us. God, right? Seriously. You remember that? Uh, and then you can just no, throw those but, off now. Uh, yeah, and that's what they used to say. <laughs> yeah, and they would that. always put emphasis on the publications. The publications. Hence, study the lens of Watchtower. Read the Bible and study the publications. But now yep. this elder who is old enough, both of them oh, yeah. old enough yeah. that they studied this book. They read this. They had to comment on this. They were probably conducting for this, but they still don't know that this is what Watchtower teaches. And he denies, rightly so, that the Bible teaches that because it doesn't. But it <clears throat> continues to try to defend the Watchtower. Mm hmm. <laughs> What's your thoughts? Why yes. would you want to be part of an organization that hides so much from yeah. you? Yeah. I mean, just... And I've exposed yeah. a lot of that just in these clips of how they feel. You know, it's crazy. Yep. And then you bring it up after that, after saying, well, we study with people without these publications. And you say, it, what is Holy Spirit effectively changing its mind? Is it giving mm -hmm. them this right. information and saying, oh, sorry, I got that wrong. Here's the new light, right? It, and there's no levels of truth. Was this truth truer than the last truth? I mean, that's just, oh, it's so ridiculous. But he, he then again repeats, that's not what the Bible says. The elder repeats twice. That's not what the Bible says. But then says, we have scholars. <laughs> yeah, sure. all that. If you had scholars, you wouldn't be teaching this because... They would say, as, shut up. <laughs> as you said rightly, Mr. Elder, twice, that's not what the Bible says. How many scholars are in the writing department? None. Uh, yeah, exactly. How many scholars translated the New World Translation? None. There are no biblical scholars. No one has come forward with credentials to say that they have <laughs> the understanding of the classic languages, the ancient right. languages, <clears throat> or the history or the culture or anything. No, these guys make this stuff up as they go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just want to say this because this is another observation that I noticed. These were two elders, okay? These are people who have 30 years each experience, if I'm not mistaken. 90, 30, 90 so altogether. So like 45. 40 and 50. Experience. 40 and 50 years, okay. The governing body sends you, whoever you active witnesses may be, sends you out here into battle with like a butter knife. <laughs> And you are the last to know about all of these things that are going on that are true. And they even sidestep issues and will not ever participate in the battles that they send you out into war to engage with people in. So think about that. They won't even stand behind their own um, rhetoric. And they send you out into it. Completely ill-equipped. Yep. Deasis is our warrior of truth. What well, I will say, which is similar, but from a different perspective, is these are the elders. These are the leaders, the shepherds, <laughs> of the, flock. the most the knowledgeable leaders. people in the congregation that are supposed to help. If someone has yeah. a question, they're supposed to go to these men to get answers. But these men don't agree with what's printed in the Watchtower. Mm -hmm. First, he said the governing body is inspired, oh, which contradicted what Watchtower said. And second, he said Jesus is our mediator, twice stating because that's what the Bible says. Yep. And he's correct about that last one, that mm -hmm. that is what the Bible says. But people are going to come to him 
to get them, you know, their mindset straight or whatever, when he doesn't even know yeah. what Watchtower teaches. This is why Watchtower gets away with this, because people, even the elders, don't know what they really teach. And to outsiders, they look arrogant and ignorant at the same time. So it's not a good look. No, it's really not. Huh. Jimmy, you got anything to add to that? I think I think they said enough on it yeah. or on this one. I'm just <laughs> I was just blown away. I really just couldn't believe they talked about me when I went inside. Yeah. Um, side yeah. note on that is after we did have this meeting. Uh, the very next day, I did send a text message That's to right. the coordinator body of elders and told him that they had come to visit and they kind of got combative and uh, that they talked behind my back. Yeah. And I actually told him that uh, you might want to have a little discussion. You might need to go counsel them on being appropriate when to say things because right. you never know who's listening. <laughs> How to have empathy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that's, yeah, I just couldn't believe this. Yeah, it's, it was a mess. All right, well, let's get into the next segment and see what else happens. And, and, and you know, if you go back, let's see. There's, there's other things that I have a problem with. There's other laws that Watchtower puts on everybody that are not scripturally backed up. For one, a beard. There's nowhere, nowhere in the Bible that says... I can't have a beard. No, we have a lot of brothers that have oh. beards. And but stuff. they can't hold positions. In con they can't be elders. They can't be servants. They can't run mics. Do y'all know why the beard thing was put in place? Do y'all know why? Tell, us, tell, tell me why. Now, do y'all even know why? Well, tell me why. Okay. All right. So y'all know that Russell had a beard. Okay. Okay. Rutherford took over. Rutherford had a problem with Russell. Rutherford was on a little power trip and Russell or Rutherford ended up changing a lot of stuff that Russell taught. When Rutherford went to Germany and the German branch overseer wanted a printing press, he asked Rutherford, he's like, Hey, I need a printing press. Rutherford didn't say anything right away. And then he said, came up later and said, if you'll take that thing off, I'll get you the printing press. The next day, that brother came back clean shaven and he got the printing press. It was a man made decision that was put upon the organization because Russell or Rutherford didn't want people following Russell anymore. And that was one thing he did. That's why in the 1926 photo at Bethel, the Christmas picture, everybody there is clean shaven, clean shaven. If a beard was good enough for Russell and we look at him as being the founder of Jehovah's Witnesses, why can't they have one? It was a man made decision by Rutherford to kill the beards. Why do you say that he was a founder of Jehovah's Witnesses? Oh, everybody's, every, but it's in our base. He's the one that revives, revitalized the organization. But see, Jehovah's Witnesses, there's uh, Noah, all of them have been Jehovah's Witnesses. No, Jehovah's years. Witnesses were not established legally, as far as name is concerned, until 1935. And then, but see, all of them has, has... If, if that were the case, if that were the was, case, if Noah was a Jehovah's Witness, he would have been disfellowshipped because he was drunk. David would have been disfellowship because he had multiple wives and had a guy sent to be killed in, 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 because he was trying to cover up his adulterous affair with Bathsheba. If they were Jehovah's Witnesses, they would have been disfellowshipped. Well, we, we have to disagree with you, don't we? I don't know how you... If I, if I were to commit adultery and then have somebody they, killed... But they serve the Almighty God. And... He, David did just bad things, but he got he repented of those things, and that's what Jehovah done to it. Made him a king, didn't he? Yeah, but but guys, there's 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 just so much, and I could go yeah. on. Well, did, did, yeah. did Jehovah turn his back on him, on Moses? I mean, on on, 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 on David? David? Yeah, did he? Not according to the scripture. But, but he did all these all, all these bad things he did, but Jehovah God still used it. You know what? And I looked at that as one of the things that kept me going back in the day. Because there were some things that, you know, I wasn't too proud of myself that I did when I was inactive. 
And I was thinking, oh, I'll never find Jehovah's favor again. But then stories like Manasseh and David, yeah, that made me feel better. I'm like, well, at least I didn't kill anybody. At least I didn't do, at least I didn't go off in a spiritistic way like Solomon did. But what did Jehovah do to David after he did all these things? What did he do? He, he, love after he, he showed him some love. Himself. Yeah, he, he showed him some love and brought him back in. Yeah, that's that's all fine and well. But the thing is, you have to admit that at the time he did those things, if he was a Jehovah's Witness, he would have been disfellowshipped. Well, bedroom, we could sit here and talk all day, but we're gonna have to go. Oh, come on, we're, we're just getting on. started. Yeah, well, we'll have to come back another time. Come back to us. And, uh, and and I'm gonna tell uh, you guys right now. Um, I know what I'm getting into. I've already talked to my dad about this. And my dad told me, he said, Jimmy, whatever you feel like you need to do, whatever you feel like is the best thing to do, go ahead and do it. He said, the only person I'm worried about is my mom. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not writing a disassociation letter. Not happening. And I will not be disfellowshipped. Because... I am not going to allow an organization to label me. And if that was the case, there might be some legal action. All right, well that segment covered a bunch of things and let's go through them one at a time. First, you bring up man-made rules and naturally it goes, to facial hair, uh -oh. to the beard, right? Uh -oh. We're gonna have to go to the elders room. <laughs> <laughs> Brothers can't have beards, and you say that, but what is, what's his response at first? you remember? He said that, well, there's brothers that have beards in other lands. Mm -hmm. But then you rightly say, you can be a brother with a beard, mm -hmm. but you can't have any nope. responsibility. No. There is, it, that kind of changed a little bit, I believe it's in 2016, that the local congregation could decide whether or not having a beard was considered unacceptable. But that's still ridiculous to put any kind of limitations on it at all. When men grow beards, because that's how they were created by God, <laughs> to put a limit on that is yeah. just ridiculous. And then you give the story about where that came from, mm -hmm. which is well known among the XJWs, <laughs> that uh, Rutherford went to Germany and the German printing, the, the branch, guy, branch, branch overseer or whatever, or like had a big beard like Russell. And Rutherford was having a lot of trouble at this point mm -hmm. with Russell's followers who disagreed with a lot of the changes Rutherford was making. So he didn't like people looking like Russell. Yep. And this guy in the German right. branch overseer with the long beard looked like Russell. And was asking Rutherford for a beard, which he said he would not give to him unless he shaved. And so this is all Rutherford. And Rutherford even had a picture of Jesus. It was, oh, what was the name of the book? I have to look it up. Uh, had a picture of Jesus in a book from the 30s, clean shaven. And tried to argue Damn. that Jesus did not have a beard. Because, and it was, oh, the That's argument was so ridiculous. <laughs> that the beard right there. somehow made him look effeminate that was his argument but it was really all about russell where he didn't want people looking like russell bizarre very bizarre and they didn't have a response to that but of course they don't have a response to that uh let's see either way not in the bible yeah i had to write all this down because you covered a lot oh you said russell was the founder <laughs> of watchtower so and he had a beard so why can't other brothers and then the elder says he wasn't why do you say why do you he say was that? the founder why do you say that he was the founder because he started the watchtower because <laughs> yeah. he's he the did. founder but then that brother and this is a relatively newer thing he tries to go back and say, no, 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 Jehovah's organization has always existed, which they've, they've said that for a long time. But then Dark he starts ages. calling Noah one of Jehovah's Jehovah, Witnesses yeah. and David one of Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> Jimmy, that was awesome. That's all I got to say. <laughs> but you were right. Well, if Noah was a witness, yeah, he would have gotten disfellowship for getting... Or at least reproved. Reproved. Now, David, David would have been disfellowship. A murdering adulterer. Yeah, that's grounds for disfellowship. Multiple wives. Multiple wives, yeah. Polygamy, yeah, that's fine. Back then. 
So no, these guys were not Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, and you make that point to which he says, well, we just have to disagree with you. <laughs> Sorry you feel that way. But bases mm. that disagreement on nothing. We no scriptures, no reasoning. We, they never think, gave me a rebuttal. Yeah. We think the governing body wants us to disagree with you right now. Yeah. <laughs> this is the third time you give them facts, you give them scenarios to think about, and they do not answer the questions that you ask. They just repeat the prescribed line. Well, no, it was one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, David is one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Russell wasn't the founder. Now, that's relatively new, if my understanding is correct. They stopped saying that he wasn't the founder more recently. Yeah. Because they want to act like Jehovah's Witnesses have always existed. And that's wow. simply not true. That is new. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. fairly new. Yeah. Someone brought that up to me in a comment. Like, yeah, they quit saying that recently. So they're starting to shift away from that now. Yeah. Yeah, they, because I had a conversation with a circuit overseer recently who said that Paul was a member of the governing body. Yeah, and we're going to get into that. Oh, that's a good that's, one. Yeah, too. we'll get into that's that a, one. But yeah, he did say that. We're not going to do a spoiler. No, but yeah, a tease. you're going to hear all about that. <laughs> So we've got that. And then you talk about Manasseh. And I remember that was a big deal when I was in too, because yeah. anytime I would make a mistake, I would always think about Manasseh. Yeah, too, and it was yeah. a mistake by Watchtower standards, not by reality standards. Right. I would difficult. think of Manasseh. Well, Manasseh killed people. He burned children at the altar. He did all this stuff. And, and Jehovah forgave him and put him back on the throne. And none of the stuff that we did would yeah. compare to in any, way. any of that. Yeah, and David was the, the other one. In yeah. no way. I never killed anybody. Never committed adultery. None of these things. Nope, nope, nope. I'm okay. If these guys, or if David's going to be resurrected, you know I am. Yeah. If, you know, <laughs> I'm a shoe-in. Okay. I'm a shoe-in to make it through Armageddon or whatever. No problem. Uh, then you talk about Solomon. And it's at this point, after three utter fails, they cannot respond to anything you throw at them. They just repeat the standard line. They start to beg off. And he, he says, well, how's he puts it? Uh, well, basically, buddy, yeah, yeah, well, we don't have time, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. that's when you bring up how your dad supports you, but you're worried about your mom. And I love that you said, you're not going to disfellowship me. Yeah, that's right. I or I'm going to have to bring legal action. Yeah, I just feel like there's no reason I should play by their rules. Right. So I figured I had heard somewhere that if you threaten them with legal action, they tend to back off of you. It's in the Shepherd the Flock of God book that yeah. if someone threatens legal action, they have to call the branch yep. before doing anything. Because the branch is like the mothership. They have to listen to the branch. It the does elders, postpone it. Yeah. Elders yeah. have very little uh, autonomy. They yeah. have to go to the branch for almost everything. So for anybody it's that's kinda like saying I appeal to Caesar. Basically, yeah. 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 They have to go they have to go to the branch. So for anybody that's faded out there, you might want to Remember that piece of information. Legal now, action. I've heard mixed results. Please you try. just fellowship me, I'll have to take legal action. Yeah. Because I've had people say that works, and I've had other people say they knew people who got disfellowshipped anyway. And I saw a video recently about someone who is actually taking legal action because of being disfellowshipped. So, Good. Yeah. Well, we, need to, we definitely need to come up with some kind of... Um, Class action lawsuit, class action shunning lawsuit, if that's possible. Well, I it is a Canada. company. Watchtower is a company. It there is an go. organization. It's in their charter. I think they're trying yeah. to do that in so, Canada. So, yeah. So, if they're a company, it would be just like suing a company. Yeah. If there's any attorneys right. watching, yes. specifically in the United States, because you already have the class action in Canada, but if there's any attorneys watching, if there's any legal precedent, for being able to sue the Watchtower organization for being disfellowshipped without being present. Like if you refuse to show up for the, yeah. you know, the judicial committee or whatever. They just do it because they want it's to. It's alienation yeah, look, or please, retaliation. Right there's got to be something that can be. Yeah, yeah. defamation of character because now you're slander. Labeled. Slander. Yeah, all of that. There's got to be something. If there's something, something that people can do, please <laughs> let me know. I would love to have you on the channel. I'd love to at least talk about what may be possible, even if there's Class limited action circumstances. action shunning losses. Because there's a lot of people. Because this shit has yeah. to stop. And even if it can't be class action, even if there's just under narrow circumstances it's possible, I want to know when it's possible because I think people need to know when it's possible. Well, getting back to the whole legal action real quick, um, I do know of somebody. Um, there is a brother um, who I know 
who tried the whole legal action thing and getting back to what you said, um, it did postpone things and it definitely complicated things. And they did have to talk to the branch and coordinate all of this. And it bought him some time. Um, Unfortunately, though, he still got disfellowship. They um, ended up disfellowshipping. They ended up disfellowshipping him for um, causing divisions. I think. I think that's what mm -hmm. it ended yeah. up being. So, Sounds like that'd be yeah. about right. Yeah, and I I know that like there was a failed case in Canada where one former brother tried to sue, and Canada said no we don't get involved in that's religion. We're not getting involved in that. And the one that I know of that's ongoing is in Europe, but see her in is GDPR mm -hmm. because she says that they cannot announce her. They cannot use her personal data without her approval. And that to do that, to announce her name in public as defamation and all that would violate GDPR. So that's the end <laughs> she's taking, but we don't have that in no, the United States. We need that. We don't have any kind of data protection laws like that here that mirror GDPR. Yeah. So I'd love to know if you have any legal expertise, you know, let us know. Is yeah. there anything people can do, even if it's just marginal or under very specific circumstances? I want people to know under what circumstances they have rights in this yeah. regard. So please let us know. Yeah. Contact at xjwanalyzer.com. Email me and I'll we'll set it up. I'll get you on the channel. All right. Let's get to the next segment and see what happens next with the elders who are now trying to get away from Jimmy. <laughs> I am willing to talk about anything. I want everything that I have found to be false, but it's not. And the problem with it is when you're fully in the organization, Watchtower controls everything we do. They control what we wear, what we do with our appearance, how we're supposed to view um, many, many things. They control what we do. And y'all know that yeah. to be true. Uh, just don't get yourself so, in, so trapped up in Satan. I, I, it's not, Satan's thing. I, it's he, not, I, I, right now, I don't even believe in a Satan. I don't believe in a Satan. And, 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 and I guess, you know, we talked about love, and I guess this is one thing I'd love to have an answer for, is if you look in the Hebrew scriptures, how many times did Jehovah kill people? Jehovah, not a murderer. But he, he did, he has caused angels to kill like 185,000. So the, what about the flood? Right. What about the Amalekites when he killed the kids? And the animals. But he told them beforehand what was going to happen. Long, just like he's telling us right now about Armageddon. But then you go over into the New World, or you go into the Greek scriptures, Christian Greek scriptures, and it's all about love. It, I mean, from Genesis all through the Hebrew scriptures, if you count it up, there's over 2 million deaths at the hands of God. Satan didn't kill any, I think it was like 10. So I, I, I'm having a hard time believing in Satan right now. But yeah. but in the Hebrew scriptures, it are not, it not yeah, in the Hebrew, Jehovah took out a lot of people. The Baal worshipers, the flood, the Amalekites, all the nations surrounding. He literally helped kill all those people. You can't deny that. Well, that's a higher authority. I don't go that way. I'm yeah, not, but, you know, but, that was but, the reason he done it too. but then, so let me ask you this. Do you guys think it's reasonable? This is one of the questions I had. Armageddon's going to come. Okay. Jehovah's Witnesses, we believe that if you're not a Jehovah's Witness, you're going to die at Armageddon. Do y'all believe that? That depends on the heart condition that Jehovah sees. We can't read hearts. Okay, that's fair. So let's say that there's seven and a half billion people on the world. Let's say six billion people are killed. Are you okay with that? They've been warned. They've been warned. They've been that's warned. what we're doing today. They've been warned. Mm, I, but but out of six billion people, how many are kids? 
Well, they've been one off. How many are people? How many are people that have never had the chance to look at the information? Now, that's, that's, the, that's the opportunity that's, to do it. Yeah, but you, you got but you got countries where the work is banned: China, Iraq, Syria, Yemen. You're going to tell me that there's no good people there? There's friends that are part of the world trying to help. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry to just to like in uh, Russia. I'm, Russia is increasing in number number of witnesses every day. No, actually, they're not. But they, I, they're not actually. The numbers are the, the, the number. That's what the, uh, the society uh, also out. said that it's okay. bad to get involved with politics, but they got in bed with the UN. And there, I'm I, I, I'm not trying to be combative. I'm trying to actually look at this stuff critically, critically. I'm a critical thinker and Watchtower does not want anybody that's a critical thinker. They want somebody that's going to be a yes man. You, you, yeah. you, you, Watchtower gives you information. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. And then as long as you're doing that, you can scoot your chair up so you're not no, in the sun. I'm good. Look, as I'm long good. as you're doing that, you're fine. But if you start asking critical questions like I'm doing, then you're labeled as somebody that's spiritually weak or an apostate or something like that. That's not fair. I'm a smart guy. And I look at things critically. For the, all these years that I've been going to Liberty, I have sat back and listened I have taken notes. At one point, I was the only one in there taking notes at the at the at the public talks. I was the only one doing it. That's because I was listening to what was being said. I was reading what had been written. And there's more things. I mean, their stance, the two witness rules got to go. Because with the two witness rule, if a kid comes to you and says, "Hey, I was touched," Most elders aren't going to believe it unless there's a second witness. But the problem with that is, is how many abusers do you know that's going to bring a witness with them when they go abuse a child? Look up the Australian Royal Commission. Look up the $66 million Canadian lawsuit that's going on, right? Civil lawsuit going on. And that's why Watchtower is asking for money. You can see it right now on JW.org in the meetings. They're always talking about donations. And Russell said that when it gets to the point that we have to start asking for money, then we might need to close up shop. That's what Russell said. And you can look at it. These brothers are on JW.org. They've got their nice watches on and their pinky rings. But they're asking hardworking rank and file witnesses for more money. The reason why? They got to cover all these lawsuits. That's why they're selling so many kingdom halls. You know, that structure was taken over too. Y'all received, y'all as elders, y'all received a letter and y'all were only supposed to read the first one or two pages of that letter to the congregation. The other part of the letter, y'all were told not to read it. That's true. About the setup with they were going to take in, they were going to take over the kingdom hall loans or whatever and and we still had to send money to the organization and that they would care for the Kingdom Hall if they needed to be repairs through the LDC or LDC, LDS, whatever it is. Um, they were going to do all that. But instead of repairing some of these Kingdom Halls, they just up and sold them. And they have moved people to other congregations. And they want to spin it and say that that's growth. That's not growth. When you close a Kingdom Hall, and you take everybody and move it over to another one, that's not growth. That's consolidation. Because Watchtower has got to get the money to help take care of these lawsuits. Well, there's more to it than that, uh, Jimmy. But we're going to have to go. I got a question there. Sure. I see some cigarettes. Are you smoking? Smoking, smoke bro? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Now, why did you start smoking? I've been smoking for years. You even come to the team all? Yeah. You were still doing it? Yep. Okay. I'm, I'm being honest, I, I, yeah, well, and I'm we, telling we you, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not afraid anymore. I was afraid. Yeah. I was afraid, but to know that the governing body said that they're not inspired or infallible, they have no power over me. Yeah. 
It's an, well, it's a, and if you look at the Watchtower Charter, mm -hmm. there's a Watchtower Charter that actually, and I can, I can pull that up too. Yeah. It says that they are a business organization, not a religious one. And that is in their charter. And if you want to talk about investments, Watchtower Investments, they invest in Philip Morris. They invest in Lockheed Martin, which builds war machines. They invest in Monsanto, the genetically reproduced seeds and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Those are part of their investments. Mm -hmm. There is so much stuff that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Well. Jimmy. And, 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 and I hate it. I hate yeah. it, brothers. We, we hate it too. I yeah. hate it. But, but the thing is, is there's a lot, there's so many people that have woken up, former elders, former Bethelites, the stuff that goes on on Bethel. Did you see what happened to Tony Morris a couple of weeks ago? He was caught on camera at an ABC store buying 12 bottles of McKellen whiskey. That was, that was, it's true. Everything I'm telling you guys is true. You're not going to believe it because I wouldn't have believed it if I was still in the organization years ago. But there, because that, that cognitive dissonance kicks in. Okay. Well, look, we're going to have to go. We got to go Thank you for the conversation. Okay. Thank you. Take it easy, right? I am. All right. So we played the clip all the way to the end. Yeah. And the takeaway for me here, you covered a lot of ground. And I, I took notes. You covered a lot of stuff from control to God killing 2 million people and Satan only 10 to people dying in Armageddon without being witnessed to the two witness rule, the ARC, the money grubbing governing body selling off the kingdom halls by lying to the congregations. They're not, it's not growth. It's consolidation. But wait. We've... And all of this stuff, this damning material about the Watchtower, and his response is he sees a cigarette butt on the ground and asks Jimmy if he's been smoking. That's what he cares after about. After all that after stuff, after all of that. we focus on what's really important here. After all that. So good. What did we Jesus like say? Just reach for what really matters here. Let me quote Jesus about the Pharisees. You strain out the net and gulp down the camel. They gulp down this massive, grain-fed, overweight, obese, can barely move camel and point out that you they see a cigarette butt on the ground. Yeah, after this is who we're dealing with. After all that. After all that. And you should have said it's probably, you know, the cigarette butt from the company that Watchtower's invested in. <laughs> because they've actually invested in tobacco companies, yeah. believe it or not. Or have had people invest for them in tobacco companies. Yep, it was in Again, a, a, a fund policy. that they invested in, Philip Morris, yeah, for yeah. years was part of that fund. Yeah. yeah. And they still invest in Lockheed Martin. Because I was buying cigarettes, I'm helping the organization. <laughs> My form of donation. Oh yeah, yeah. And you bring up, you bring up Tony. I mean, come Morris. on, Tony Morris. Liquor. Good yeah. buddy. Money is money. Jimmy yeah. is supporting Tony's liquor habit. Yeah, seriously. By smoking. Top shelf Tony, man. We know, like, we're helping you get the good stuff here. Yeah. I gotta say though. Because, you know, and I've talked to you guys about this before. After all that Tony Moore stuff in the liquor store, I was curious. So I went and got uh, McAllen 12. Man, that stuff's good. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this guy's right. hey, good he, stuff. Huh? He may be an SOB, but that dude's got some good taste in Scotch. Yeah, that's, that's pretty, that's good pretty stuff. strong. Yeah. That's pretty strong. All right. So we've got all that. There's a couple of little things. One thing of contributions. I do want to <laughs> point out, like you were talking about all the control and mm -hmm. how it bothered you, mm -hmm. to which not the elder who did most of the talking, but the other one came in and said, you just have to be careful that you don't get entrapped in Satan's thinking or entrapped by Satan. Something yeah, to that some, effect. Yeah. It was a little fuzzy, so it's hard to tell. And that made me think, well, okay, Jimmy read you the scripture in Deuteronomy that shows that false prophets are to be put to death and pointed out to you that about the watchtower not being inspired 
which was they denied and said governing body is inspired and then pointed out to you that they teach that Jesus isn't your mediator, which you denied twice and said, well, that isn't what the Bible said. So these elders <laughs> knew what the Bible said and that Watchtower was violating what the Bible said. But Jimmy's the one entrapped by Satan. Not once. I'm sitting here just thinking about it while you're talking. Not once did they offer to read a scripture. That's a good point. The whole time. And they didn't pray. Didn't pray. And not above. They, they tried to do a scripture, but then I, <laughs> I cut them yeah. off on that somehow. But. No prayer, no scripture, no facts responding no. to everything Jimmy brought up. Just standard Watchtower scripted lines. Rhetoric. Who's entrapped by Satan? It's not Jimmy. And this is the problem I have with Watchtower. They claim to be the only true religion. They claim to be, you know, the followers of Christ. They claim Jehovah's Witnesses existed all through history. They claim all these things. But when you question them about the things that the organization is involved in and the damage that they're doing, they don't read the Bible. They don't reason from Scripture. At least they sure didn't with Jimmy. No. no. They ignore and these and elders. evade and look for something to accuse because Jimmy smokes. And they called him an apostate while he walked away behind oh, his yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. And now that that's the most cowardly thing you could do. And what's that Paul talks about? Boldness in yeah. Acts, being bold. But they basically insult Jimmy behind his back. So if you think about all the things the Bible says about who's on Satan's side and who's on Jesus' side, and all, who was fulfilling the law of Christ <laughs> and who was completely ignoring it? Exactly. Oh, wow. Good point. Yeah. I never thought about it like exactly. that. Exactly. So this is the problem I have with Watchtower. So I was defending the Bible more than they were. You, yeah, you, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. you used it more than yeah, they I used did it at more. the very least. Yeah. And you pointed to facts that they did not point to. Yeah, and who's a member of Babylon the Great and who's not? Jimmy's never been an NGO. Our little apostate round table has never been an NGO. <laughs> I'm not going to Satan's library. You might be apostates, you know? but we're not members of Satan's <laughs> Scarlet. Yes. 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 Uh, it's true. It's true. I like it. So really, I'm mean, really... <laughs> And that's what I'd say this a lot on my channel, that people often exit Jehovah's Witnesses very quickly. That was true for me. That was true for Jimmy. It's true for Deasis. It happens pretty fast <clears throat> because once you pull the card out from under yeah. that house of cards, the whole thing collapses. So, once you start pulling on that one little loose thread, the whole garment unravels, right? <laughs> it's like Jenga. You got all these blocks stacked, but you pull the wrong block and the whole yeah. Thing falls, and that's not Satan's thinking. That's yeah. critical thinking. Yeah, <laughs> critical thinking. And I have to remind you, they said behind Jimmy's back, that's what education will do to you. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what education will do to you. It will get you right. out of the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses, which I've long <laughs> said. I don't think the governing body is against higher education. I think they're against critical thinking. Oh yeah, because Has when be. you form and you tend I mean, to get those skills, it. yeah, proved it to them right there. They yeah. don't want you thinking. Don't, I mean, don't be thinking to hell with Solomon, and what <laughs> and all that stuff he said about wisdom and yeah. about seeking it, right. and acquiring it. You know, let's just, you know, cover it. Plug the ears. Yeah. La 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 la. Can't hear you. Well, that about covers everything for this one. Unless you guys have anything else. Any final takeaways? No, I'm, I'm good. I know the comments are going to explode on this one. And I'm sure there's a lot of points we missed. So if we miss anything, definitely leave a comment. We want to hear, what do you think about this? If you're an apologist, if you think that the elders did just fine, please explain. Explain how the elders did the right thing with Jimmy by talking behind his back and uh, by talking against his critical thinking by saying he was in, being entrapped by Satan yeah. when they're the ones ignoring what the scriptures say. Please explain to us yeah. how Watchtower is right and all the things that Jimmy brought up. You don't like it, but was it wrong? Yes, you don't have to like it. <laughs> Not ask you to like it, but can you prove that Jimmy was wrong? All right. Well, if you like this video, definitely be sure to click like.
don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you get notified when I release new videos. And as always, thanks for watching.